Well, hello again. Here's a good one for the yes or no treatment, a nice current one. And uh, that is, is Boris a good prime minister? Well, I guess that's a pretty important question given that he's really, uh, in many respects, setting the nation's direction at a very difficult time. First of all, just a few key facts. Uh, his name to begin with, it's Alexander Boris de Pfeffel Johnson. Somehow people seem different when you hear their full names. <laughs> An odd phenomenon that. Uh, he's 56 years old. Uh, he is uh, uh, born in New York. Uh, he was up until recently a dual citizen of the US and, and Britain. Uh, he was the mayor of London and he was the foreign secretary and has been the prime minister since July of 2019. So almost two years, gosh, it seems like less somehow. <laughs> uh, well, what do I mean really about is he a good prime minister? Well, I'm not going to fall into the trap of saying we must set very specific criteria perhaps the way professors might or management consultants or, or whatever, because uh, the point here is what people think about the answer to this question, what their perceptions are. And they can have very different frameworks. Some will base their judgment on his personal appeal, his uh, charisma. I think that really goes a long way. It certainly explains a lot about Boris. Others will uh, Mo set his performance against the things that he has promised. Uh, others will, of course, uh, have a view of his policy intentions, whether he's achieved them or not, what, what he promises the public and what, what they continue to expect of him. Um, and perhaps even uh, his skills as a uh, national leader, as a manager, and so forth. So there's a lot of different ways you can judge whether it's a, he's a good uh, prime minister. It's really up to you and to those who will take a view on the yes or no uh, components of this question. So let's get right to it. Uh, what about those who say, yes, Boris is a good prime minister. Here, here are some of their reasons. First of all, uh, Boris uh, did win a national election by the largest majority for any Tory incumbent since 1987. Now that means a lot. What that says is that the nation wanted him. Uh, and of course the uh, parliamentary uh, Tory party, the MPs that uh, selected him, uh, that's uh, the ultimate, the ultimate compliment. Uh, MPs, congressmen, elected officials, everywhere in the world care about one thing and one thing only above everything else, and that's getting reelected. So uh, Boris did a good job for them, uh, and uh, they'll not forget that. Uh, the second thing is uh, Boris delivered Brexit after uh, some fumbling around by his predecessor. Now, of course, if you are a, a, a Remainer, you won't think of that as a, uh, a reason to say he's a good prime minister, but, but uh, for those who uh, wanted Britain to leave the EU, uh, indeed, that was a great accomplishment. It was something he promised he would do. Uh, now, there's a little bit of a mm, uh, kind of footnote to this, which is that the whole uh, negotiation about the details seems to be rumbling on forever. I mean, the, the fishermen are, are protected or they're not protected. Are the French fishing boats here? Are we going to sink them? Or are they aggrieved and being kept out? You know, all of these things just seem to go on and on and on. But nonetheless, uh, he got the referendum passed. Uh, he signed the deal. Uh, in effect, uh, Britain is out. So for many people, that's, that's a huge, a huge accomplishment. Uh, next, uh, no small matter is that uh, unlike uh, President Trump, for instance, uh, Boris does defer to experts. He, he recognizes that he can't be on top of 
uh, complicated questions all by himself, especially scientific ones. And as we've seen in his policy briefings, he has no compunction about saying, well, I'll have uh, Mr. Uh, Bloggs or, or Mr. Jones here explain that to you because, because I, don't, uh, I don't know what the answer is. Well, I'll give him some credit for that. Uh, next, he, he does have relevant experience. He's not only been a, a, a key member of the cabinet and, and uh, uh, been involved in uh, government at the highest levels, but as mayor of London, he actually had administrative executive experience. Some would say he did or didn't do a very good job of that, but, but uh, let us not forget he was re-elected as the mayor of London. So the experience is there. Uh, next, uh, Boris is articulate. He's able to communicate well. He, he's a debater, uh, so he knows how to express himself. And uh, I suppose most people that get the job are pretty good at that, but I, I think he's better than most. Now, of course, uh, some would say, oh, I don't believe anything he says, but nonetheless, he communicates it clearly. And then finally, I suppose, for many people who think he's a good prime minister, their simple reason for saying that is he's a Tory. What more do we have to say? The alternative is unthinkable. Uh, so there you have it. There, there's, the, there's the case for the fact that he's a good prime minister. Well, of course, as we all know, there are some who say he's not a good prime minister. Oh, dear. Uh, let's examine some of those arguments. Well, I guess at the very head of the list is the belief that he did make a mess of the coronavirus confrontation. He delayed too long. He was too kind of relaxed about imposing uh, draconian restrictions on, on the populace. And as a consequence, it got going much too fast. We've, we've had uh, in many respects, um, you know, higher incidence of, of infection and death than, than many other countries. And uh, that really, for many people, that has to be laid at, at Boris's doorstep. Now, of course, once uh, getting going, he seems to have uh, done a pretty good job of it. The uh, uh, vaccination program compared to most other countries has been a big success, but, but it started too late. And for that, uh, many will, will not forgive him. Uh, next, uh, and of course people will disagree about this, but many, many object to his uh, penchant for grandiose projects. He's even talking about, uh, I think it's a tunnel between Scotland and Northern Ireland, or is it a bridge? But, but it's uh, these enormous projects, uh, proposing them for a nation that, that is go gradually going broke is just ludicrous. Uh, and he did the same thing when he was the mayor of London. He wanted to build this mammoth new airport in the Thames estuary, upsetting a lot of the uh, nature bird uh, type people in, in the process. But again, uh, these are the sorts of things that one kind of suspects he's doing as a kind of ego trip because they uh, the projects he proposes tend not only to not have a good business case, but, but are, are unaffordable. So that's, that's a black mark. Uh, next, uh, he has a reputation, I think, for kind of mm, stitching up uh, investigations, inquiries, and so forth that come out with the answer that he wants. He's probably, in that respect, not an honest man. This recent uh, take look at whether or not there is institutional racism in government and in the police force and, uh, and, and so forth, uh, came out with a, a response which he endorsed, which nobody else believed. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, some new issues arising with the with the business about uh, uh, Cameron and civil servants uh, having dodgy relationships with private industry, and he's announced, I think, under great pressure, uh, that there will be investigation into that, and, and he'll probably appoint people who themselves are kind of part of the crony setup. Uh, nobody believes we'll get a straight answer out of that. So, so he is the sort of chap who uh, does compromise himself on uh, these sorts of questions. Next, another uh, real black mark uh, in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of many, 
has been his stinginess on offering the NHS employees and most notably the nurses who are the big heroes of, of the COVID uh, virus situation, uh, a stingy pay, a pay award of 1%. And people went crazy about that. And in, in the final analysis, particularly for somebody who doesn't mind spending a lot of money and building bridges to Ireland and that sort of thing, uh, it was probably one of his biggest mistakes, uh, and I think he's backtracked on that a bit. But uh, why would he even do that in the first place? I, th I think he really misjudged the public on it. In any case, it's a, it's a black mark. From his time as mayor of London uh, up until the present, uh, his reputation as a manager is not good. It's uh, he has the. Uh, image of being uh, chaotic, uh, uninterested in detail, uh, letting things uh, run on too long, which may be uh, why he uh, made a mess of the early days of the treatment of the coronavirus. So one can ask some questions about whether as a manager, which is a pretty important uh, uh, set of characteristics for the, for the leader of the nation, uh, that, that he has some way to go. Uh, next, he has some um, kind of unpleasant kind of uh, personality quirks. Uh, some would say he's, uh, he's uh, misogynistic, uh, some would say he's uh, racist, uh, he's uh, a, a perhaps even more important uh, uh, snob. Uh, he is, uh, and this is almost a disqualifier, disqualifier in the eyes of some. He's privileged. He was a member of Bullington Club at uh, Oxford, uh, only for the very posh, privileged, entitled people, etc., etc. And, you know, the, the, these personal characteristics uh, uh, for many are, 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 are pretty dreadful, really. And then finally, on top of everything else, one can ask questions about his prospects. Some say that he has not really recovered fully from his bout with the coronavirus. Uh, even though he's taken off weight, uh, probably at Carrie's insistence or maybe that of his cardiologist, uh, he, has, um, he, he still doesn't look tip-top. And, and uh, so for that, we have to worry about whether he can continue to be any kind of prime minister uh, uh, indefinitely, and and then uh, whether or not uh, he will have to be replaced. Well, that's a fairly long list of uh, kind of worrying arguments about whether or not he's a good prime minister. Uh, you'll probably wonder what my take is. Well, well, here it is. I'm afraid. I think he is a kind of a grandstander, a bit of a narcissist, a bit of a bully, and uh, to be honest, I don't really believe anything he says. It's awful to say that, but, but that's the way I come out. Um, he's uh, really untrustworthy, uh, and uh, so uh, he is our Prime Minister. Hopefully he can uh, do the job reasonably well, but, but uh, if I were given the choice, uh, I would prefer someone else, even the current, la the current Labour Party leader. And uh, so that's really, uh, uh, for many people out there, I imagine you'll be disappointed <laughs> to hear my view, but it's a firm one. Sorry about that. Uh, and I will uh, hope that you, uh, in any case, uh, give me a like, uh, uh, the usual stuff. Uh, comment, uh, subscribe, notify, and so forth, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.